Hey mommies, Ashley here from Glow Body Personal Training. I am so excited to tell you that I delivered my baby and it was a girl. We waited to find out the gender until birth. Actually delivered her standing up, which I'm going to tell you more about. And she came out very fast this time. And I was completely surprised with this girl. I really had the intuition and thinking that it was a boy the whole time. But I guess God just knew the desires of my heart because I've wanted a little girl my entire life. And finally we have her. So she's right here, Eva Falls Keller. And she's born 7 pounds, 10 ounces, and 21 inches long. So just as long as my second baby. So Riker was 9.5 pounds. So I was so shocked and surprised at how tiny and relatively little she was at 7 pounds, 10 ounces. This was a fast labor. I had contractions for six hours. What started contractions was actually paddle boarding on the lake. And contractions weren't bad at first. It was very manageable. And I, I had the feeling that it could be it. But I still knew it might be Braxton Hicks contractions. And so I paddle boarded for about 50, 55 minutes, staying close to the edge of the lake, got out and texted my husband, who was not home at all. He was actually in an airplane flying with a buddy who owns a plane and took the boys with him on a little mini adventure. So my text started out sweet as in, hey, I might be having contractions, this might be the day, to 30 minutes later, okay, it's time to come home right now. So he quickly got the boys in the car, it's a 45 minute drive to get home. And by the time he got home, I just needed to stay home a little bit longer, doing all these tips and tricks I'm about to show you, before I felt truly ready that it was time for transition and try, time to get my butt to the hospital. I'm going to share with you my top six positions if your goal is to have a natural labor that is fast. So the first thing you need to do is you need to walk it out. Once those contractions start coming on, um, and if you're full term and ready for delivery, you need to walk and be sure that you're with somebody else. So one of my best girlfriends, Rachel, came with me around the block. We went uh, when, when Luke wasn't home yet from the, <laughs> the airplane ride, and she walked with me and we stopped on trees and sometimes leaning over on someone's truck if we had to, just to get through those contractions, which are about two minutes apart at that point. So walking, that's not even counted as one of these six best positions, but it's just what you need to do to use gravity to your advantage, to pull a baby down. But you want to walk it out until you feel like, okay, I need to slow down, I need to have a more stationary position, because the contractions are you know, probably less than two minutes apart at that point and you need to have a little bit more stability. So what you do then is grab your stability ball and I need feet nice and wide and you'll notice my stability ball is a little bit deflated. So I wanted it like that on purpose and that's because I wanted the pelvic floor getting nice and low and I didn't want to be way up here, right? I really want to sink down into it. So feet will be out in, in a wide position Toes, toes with your knees, and I just want big, wide circles just like this. And the night before I went into labor, I hadn't done these for weeks, I decided that it was time to do some hip circles. I was really ready to deliver. I was three days late, and so I did my hip circles. I stayed on this ball for about five minutes, making them as wide as possible. I really want to show you. I'm going to reach it back, all the way back, and, all, and then tuck it in, a pelvis tuck in the front. And the next morning, I went into labor when I was paddleboarding. So, not saying that it's related, but it might have been. So, I just want to share that with you as well to be doing your hip circles before you go into labor and then also as you're laboring. I'll be honest, when I was laboring, my hip circles were not that fast. It was more like, it was more like this. Like, I was just hardly moving. But still, say your baby has a crooked shoulder and he or she is trying to come out, you know, your vaginal canal, like get get deep into your canal, um, and here she is stuck. Just this, these little bitty movements, even if you're grimacing and stopping right here for contractions, just to, to pull it together during a contraction, you still might be getting your baby in a better, more natural position to come down for a vaginal delivery. Next one is on your hands and on your knees, <laughs> on this ball right here. So doing your, doing hip leans back and forth, on the ball, and this is a position that I used farther into my labor. So earlier in the labor, right after I was walking, I was doing those hip circles. Then after here, I'm just closing my eyes, gently just resting my hands, and my breasts became a little tender too, so I just give them some space to let the girls hang down a little bit and just rested all my body weight on here, just trying to move, move my booty back and forth, open up those hips, lifting your hips up side, 
to side just like this in a upside down crescent moon position. Again, just to get baby moving down and that little bit of rhythmic movement is kind of cathartic to help you get through contractions or in between contractions as you're staying calm and mentally recovering, just reminding yourself, I've got this, I have a plan, I know the positions to do and it's just really comforting to know that you're doing the best things possible to progress this labor and get it going even faster. The next one is actually in the bathroom. All right, so you're in your bathroom and this position will hurt like crazy. But the point is to get your, your feet, your knees up higher than um, your pelvic floor. You're sitting on the toilet. Most likely your toilet will be open, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like for right here. And then you're just leaning on your legs. Um, sometimes I've even just hold Luke's arms right here and he'd hold on to me. And again, you're just trying to open everything up. If you can sit upright, if you still have that in you and your contractions aren't so bad that you need to lean over. But I was definitely at the point where I was just leaning over and to get through two contractions here would be my goal. Okay, two contractions, sitting on the toilet and then I'll allow myself to stand and take a recovery almost, if you will. The contractions won't stop. They just keep coming rhythmically. But if giving yourself that little goal, like, hey, one contraction at a time or two contractions or three contractions on the toilet will really help facilitate a faster labor. Now, when you get to the point where labor is bringing on some anxiety and your body just feels really stressed, the best thing to do is to get into a really warm bath. So fill up your bath as much as possible. I don't have a big tub, so this is just what I have to work with. And what I did is I folded up a bath towel just to keep my knees happy. I put, I put multiple folds in this, fold it all the way up so it's a nice roll, put it on my knees and stayed in this upright position as much as possible. So I'm on my knees right here, just sat down and just tried to keep my knees nice and wide. And I kind of lean over onto my knees or onto the floor and just rock slowly again and just let my body enjoy the warm water. And when this position became a little too much on my knees, just sit on your butt. Again, keeping your legs as wide as possible. Knees up on the sides. Ideally, you have a bigger tub than I do, so you can really just splay those legs out. But we want an upright torso to allow gravity to work with you and not be just leaning back in this lounge position. The more you're reclined and leaning back, the worse that it is um, to promote a fast, easy, natural delivery. So think upright all the time, or at least leaning over and rocking those hips very gently. But I promise you when you get in that low spot that pretty much all of us hit during labor, the bath is just so soothing and having some lavender essential oils in there, if you can get your husband or doula to sprinkle some in the bathtub for you, or some lavender salts, it's really relaxing and calming too. Definitely turn on some music and just go deep, go inside, and let yourself feel like you're, you're in your natural zone. I recommend dimming the lights and trying to become as relaxed as possible in the bathtub to just let your body open up and do what it needs to do without you stressing too much and closing everything down because that's not what we want. So keep a relaxed mind. And again, the music and essential oils and warm bath really helped do that for me. I stayed in the bathtub for as long as I could until I felt like I needed to um, progress a little bit farther and now I'm going to show you exactly what I did on the hospital bed to get Ava to come. If you plan on doing a hospital delivery like I did, keep in mind that there's a lot of stressors getting into the car to go to the hospital, your husband or doula or mom parking you off, parking um, at the door to let you in. One thing that you control can control is walking into the hospital. So make it your goal from the start and tell whoever you're with that you really want to walk your way in in order to keep labor progressing because we don't want to get to the hospital where there's bright fluorescent lights, there's lots of people, smells and scents that can just turn you off and we don't want it to slow down labor by making that transition into a hospital setting. So if you want to keep on sunglasses, I've done this before during my second labor, no matter what you do, just stay internal, say I'm, I'm, keeping, I'm keeping in my own drive, we're going to keep this going, think positive thoughts, say a prayer, and walk your way into the hospital using the railings or benches, whatever the hospital has. You'll also hopefully have somebody with you that you can use for support as well. Once you get into your hospital room and you get checked, hopefully you get admitted. Typically, um, if it's six centimeters, if you're six centimeters dilated or more, um, then you are admitted into the hospital that I go to. I was at eight centimeters when we arrived at the hospital. I asked them to break my water because that really helped 
move along labor when I had Riker and they readily agreed so I was really glad they popped my water I got wet and I thought that it was completely broken here's the deal it wasn't so I went to my go-to position now because this is how I delivered Riker and I thought for sure that it would work with baby number three as well I got on my hands and knees just like this and held onto the back of the hospital bed and just leaned on it just like this, just getting through one contraction at a time, making sure that your knees are wider than your hips, your feet are in, and you just have a nice, stable, balanced position holding onto the back of this hospital bed. If you want to stick your hips out, that's fine. Other times you might rest, like in between contractions, I would use my core, stand up, and get in this recovery position. And then during contractions, I would just hang on and hold on tight trying to open everything up down there. Now, for me, my contractions slowed down a little bit at this point. I got really into despair because I had went from 30 second apart contractions all the way to a minute and 30 second apart contractions. And I was thinking, oh no, breaking my water actually slowed down labor this time. But what I learned during this third delivery and the nurses told me afterwards is that it's common that I actually see your contractions get farther apart again right before you're about to deliver and even more intense, if that's believable. So that's what was happening with me. And I, again, was feeling really bad. I was praying. This is a very spiritual labor for me. And I decided that I just needed to have a little change of scenery. So I decided to stand up. The staff was very willing to allow me to do whatever position I wanted. So I got on the side of the hospital bed. The hospital bed was inclined a little bit, so I was able to still hold on to the side of the bed. Feet were nice and wide. And my next contraction, I felt a little bit of an urge to push. So I just bent my knees a little bit, pushed gently, and that is when the water just gushed out. It was everywhere, you guys. And I was like, wow, that is, now that is a broken water. So it was a surprise to everyone. Um, as nurses went to go grab towels to clean up the floor, Ava just started coming out. And so I'm right here. At this point, I'm leaning on the hospital bed through a really hard contraction. And my plan was to stand up again once that contraction had passed. And as the contraction was happening, Ava started coming out and I could feel a baby coming out the entire time. It was a long, long contraction. The nurses ran over, pushed, lick a size and move. He got out of the way and, and Ava came out in one long contraction. There was no more, there was no pushing um, besides that initial push, which popped my water, which is a very gentle push because I didn't want to cause excessive damage um, or tearing. And um, yeah, so no pushing, which is the best thing you can do when you're trying to avoid tearing. But that doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes you might have to push for hours. So keep that in mind. There's just my experience in standing up was the best decision in that case. Now the last thing that I really want to make clear and stress to you heart to heart, Marnie, is whether you have Pitocin and you're induced or an epidural like I did during my first delivery, whether you have an emergency C-section or you use forceps or vacuum, no matter how your baby comes into this world, it is a beautiful miracle. There should be no guilt or, or pride attached to how you deliver it. It's just a very personal experience between you and your baby. And bottom line up front, it's important that we have healthy babies. These are just my six best positions if your goal is a natural, fast labor, so that you can go into your labor armed with confidence, feel more relaxed, feel more in control with what you're doing with your body, and give yourself that best chance of having that natural labor. And if you don't, then no guilt associated. That's okay. I had an epidural with my first baby. Um, I didn't feel guilty about it. I think I learned a lot during that first labor. I learned even more during my second labor. And now with baby number three, I feel like I know what to do. So I just want to share this with you to save you time, save you some of that figuring it out time and work and stress so you can go in, into your labor feeling ready for it. I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye.